the devil attacking your prayer life is not just to get you to backslide that's that's too small a motivation for him to destroy there are little speakings in the world. I refuse to be satisfied. One more drop. And I'll go on a cadilla. Get into this video you're about to watch. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of Christ. I saw that man, Kobus Van Rensburg, single handedly. He had raised more than 12,000 wheelchairs and crutches. I said, This cannot be pretense. They, they are in the church there. And I went, I said, I'm going. I will pay whatever price. When I got to South Africa, I was fasting. People were just smiling. There were a few Nigerians there opening their teeth and behaving like fools. I went and locked myself. I said, Lord, I came for business. I respect this custodian. Hallelujah. See, I was so hungry. I stayed in the, in the guest house of the chief usher of the church. And when it was time, I, I sat there. I think it was row two. I sat down there. Passionately and hungry. Before Kobu started anything, even before the pastor's conference started, he called me out by prophecy. And he looked at me and he said, I see you being like Paul. You will be a, a custodian of deep revelations of the kingdom. All through the pastor's conference, he laid hands on me again. And he taught a teaching. Oh God. Kobus taught something about the fathers of old. Let me tell you how mad that man was. He went around a tour, him and his friend, right? They went to, maybe they would say, this is the pulpit that... Maybe Alexander, the way used, and you carry a handkerchief and clean it. Lord, there is an anointing on it. And he took it and threw it inside anointing oil. They went to the grave of William Branham. They said when they got to the grave, two of them fell on the floor. Under the anointing. Met the people who buried him did not fall. But many years, a man came with a hunger and an anointing from the bones of that general. The man who saw squirrels rise up, form, and enter the wilderness like Elisha. They fell and he said, what will I do now? He caught the grass close to the side of the grave and he dumped it inside the anointing oil. It's not witchcraft, it's hunger. Separate witchcraft from hunger. Separate human worship. Did all kinds of concoction on the anointing oil. My eyes was on that anointing oil all through the pastor's conference. They said, it's time for lunch. I said, lunch? Am I a fool? I leave Nigeria and come here to eat lunch? I sat down. I was, I was, I was hungry. And then they put the pictures of all the generals on the altar for people to come and pray on. When I came, I didn't choose one. I just laid down on all of them. Not just one person. People were just picking one and looking at it and crying. There was no room for that. I laid down and I said, Lord, every impartation from this man, whatever made them living wonders, I rolled on the pictures. I did everything. Hallelujah. And when I did that, Kobus gave me a gift. Every time he's under an anointing, a very heavy anointing, he would lay his hands on a material and then they would print that material. And he gave me the gift of one of those materials. And one day he looked at me. He said, Was it Andrew Murray or who was that now? No. Lester Sumro laid hands on him. And Smith Wigglesworth laid hands on Lester Sumro and he looked at me. He said, Come, I want to connect you to the lineage of the generals. And he laid his hands on me. I carried that experience. I said, I'm done with South Africa. Thank you, Jesus. I'm on my way back. When I came, I prayed it out. And let me tell you, I knew. I knew. I saw two ladies who were sitting in front of us, just joking and making noise. It wasn't up to 15 minutes. Two of them were under the anointing. I said, Thank you, Jesus. We, we, we need to focus. Hallelujah. I'll never forget that time. Pastor Chris called those of us who were from the north. I wasn't a member of Christ's embassy, but I joined. I said, let me see who will stop me. See, many of you are not hungry for the mysteries of the kingdom. I'm challenging you tonight. I'm not just entertaining you. And I stood there. People were looking at his suit. I was looking. See, Elijah said, if you can see me, you need a level of focus. Church is not where you just come and look at decoration. Look at it before and after the service, during the service. Your spirit, just like some of you, as you're sitting here, there, there's something in your spirit. You're saying, oh Lord, I know that if I focus, I will get something. Hallelujah. Reinhard Bonke. I told you about the stories of Reinhard Bonke. I saw miracles in that man's life. And I followed him to Joss. Stood for six hours, standing close to a pregnant woman who would lean on me occasionally. I said, madam, we are all standing. We are all standing. But I understood that issue. 
but I told myself if my legs would break, my legs were shaking at a point. I'm not exaggerating. But I looked at Bernard Bunker. He had finished preaching. Simple preaching. Like many of you say he's boring. No rema. Let your pride kill you there. And don't humble yourself. No rema. I need somebody who will explode me. Ah, I said, Lord, even if he's just laughing, I'm, at, I'm still there. I'm attentive. For the first time, I saw the visible manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Bernard Bunker finished taking the water. Hallelujah. And when it was time to pray for the baptism of the Holy Ghost, he said he would take water. The moment he would take water, there were probably hundreds of thousands of people there. For the first time, I saw a bed that would be bigger than this auditorium. A large bed, white bed. And there were silvery, silvery substances coming down. It was just hovering around. Ah, was I dreaming? Goodness, what is this? Nobody else was seeing it. And I saw it was moving around. Ah, so this is the mystery behind the impartation. That Reinhard Bonke can pray for hundreds of thousands of people and they will receive the baptism at once. Not to lay hands one by one, no. To pray for people. When I saw it, I knew something came upon me. Listen, let me tell you. I was focusing on that experience. By the time the bed disappeared, I was back in the stage. I didn't even know when I had turned. I was so focused. Only God knows when I turned. Hallelujah. I saw people crying, being emotional. I had no time for all those things. I, see, when you see me listening to a man that I honor, I can slap you if you, are dis if, you are, if you are disturbing me. I sit with all my heart. When Maurice Orulo came to Dunamis, I saw a lot of pastors who have no business with Dunamis. They came and humbled themselves. I said, may God bless you. This is wisdom. Hallelujah. The guy was just talking. You know how boring he preaches. I said, Lord, uh, this thing looks boring, but goodness, I won't be a fool. I'm listening. When you come for koinonia, I may be joking now like some of you are just looking and laughing. But graces, there are distributions of graces going. Some of you will just get up and leave and find out that some things have suddenly become possible. Whereas there are others. I know Joshua Selman. He's my personal friend. I know this guy. I know Maman. I even know the worship team. Is it not Sam? Abba. Sam. Sam the Mwingirvatare. And you'll be talking all this nonsense. And they are carrying the mysteries of the kingdom. Let me teach you. Learn a lesson from today. It's not human worship. But don't fool yourself. All men are not equal. They are equal in Christ. But grace has separated men into cadres. And if you recognize this, it's not human worship. It positions you to receive. And then you too will rise and begin to bless others. Hallelujah. I remember when I was going to minister in Akwamis Church. When I got to the church, people were clapping. Everybody was pointing, this is Joshua Selman. When I got there, I got down on both of my knees. Publicly in the presence of everybody. And I greeted the man. He doesn't know me. I got down on my knees and I greeted him. And I got up and I sat back. I will never see a man of God that is ahead of me that I know. And not honor this man deeply from my heart. Hallelujah. I was tired of making foolish decisions. And I looked at my Buddha. People used to criticize him and say he's a seed, seed man. I said call him whatever you want to call him. I streamed life for hours listening to him. The day I had a dream, I pursued Oyedeko. I pursued Oyedeko till he visited me in my dream. Hallelujah. Till he visited me in my dream. What are you pursuing? What is worth your time? What is it that is worth your refusing to embarrass yourself? When Oyedeko knelt down for Adeboye to lay hands on him, Ushas quickly ran. He turned and said, you, you think I came here to play? He said, I'm kneeling down to get something tangible. You are just moved by emotions. Hallelujah. Sinaj came into Koza last week. I was in my room streaming and praying in tongues. Honoring that woman of God. I said, Lord, we want our worship team to carry that kind of presence. So we will not cast. We, I, I said, if I cannot sow a seed or do anything to her, let me pay the price with my internet. And I was praying in tongues. My, the earphone was there. I was just praying. I said, Lord, on behalf of our worship team, are you desperate? To catch the mysteries of the kingdom are you desperate hallelujah elijah followed elijah elijah said mr man go he said no way kill me many of you don't have the gods and the desperation it takes that's why i'm telling you that the anointing of the spirit is not just dash that falls there is a hunger i carried a seed here from zaria and i went to canaan land to go and look for god's servants 
and we got there i dropped the seed and i knew i left that place with a tangible anointing hallelujah Johnson Suleiman was speaking and he said he went to a hotel room where they told him Benny Hinn had stayed here. He said Benny Hinn stayed here. He said how long? They said about three weeks ago. He locked himself. He started praying. He rolled on the bed. He said I'm sure he used the toilet. He went to the toilet. Sad. No, no, no. You, you see people walking and you don't know what they do. I cried when Charles and Francis Hunter, many of you know them. The healing evangelist died because I was already making plans to go to the US. What was my plan? My plan was to go and beg them that I want to scrub their toilets for two weeks. I wasn't going for title. I was hungry. In one meeting, brothers and sisters, they raised 100 wheelchairs. 100 wheelchairs. Don't tell me that is trial and error. They did it laughing. Hallelujah. When I started the preparation, they died. I cried like a baby. And then I played their, their visit. I said, oh Lord, you see my heart. And you see that I truly intended to get this anointing. I know where I'm going and I know that what I have is great but it's not enough to take me there so I humble myself and receive many of you God brought you here but week in week out you just come and you casually play when the worship people are ministering there's no sense of reverence and look these are oracles of God ministering hallelujah we're going to pray the first prayer point is repentance for neglecting the custodians of the mysteries of God in the body there are many people who say me it's, it's me and the holy spirit alone let me tell you there are certain things no matter how close you are with the holy spirit he will recommend you to vessels that he has that are already carrying it i know a woman in this nation if she prays for you if you are single if she lays hands on you your husband is going to come and your wife will come this is not all these prophets people around moving around i know this one by the spirit hallelujah yet there are still people do you know that there are people that one word they will speak to you it will terminate barrenness is that true brothers and sisters how many barren people are still moving around they would rather die than humble themselves there are people today to come and sit down in koinonia and receive they would rather go and get the message and hide somewhere and listen and come out and disregard everybody and they find out that there is a distance in between them and the anointing john followed jesus to the cross he said, I must see the end of this mystery. It was only John who saw physically the mystery of the death of Jesus and the cross. All the other people ran away. He understood the mystery of the cross. That's why hot oil could not kill him. There was something he saw that the remaining disciples did not see. What do you need to see tonight? That will take you out of where you are. Brothers and sisters, all things are available in the spirit. There are some of you, you are in ministry. You have been struggling for years. Someone sent me a text and said, how do you do with this crowd thing? Is it just, I heard of a woman who said, forget about this young man. You know, all these young men these days, the things that they do. Every time God wants to use a vessel to bless you, beware. Because Satan will begin to discredit that vessel. So that when he strikes you, your arrogance will not allow you to run for help. But tonight God is giving you wisdom. This is how the kingdom works. When the ass was missing, was Saul, listen, Saul, the son of Kish, he was destined for royalty. But when the ass was missing, they didn't waste their time to say, oh, God also speaks to us. Remember, that was what Aaron and Miriam did. They said, Kai, God, Moses cannot be the only one you are speaking to. What nonsense is that? And God said, ah, a cloud came and let Miriam leprous. It was the leprosy that that Moses was cured of when God was dealing with him. There are custodians of mysteries. Americans have lost it when they stop honoring the vessels that carry this anointing. Balance your grace message so that it does not rob you of stepping into anointings. The Bible says, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. It says, believe his prophets and you shall prosper. There are men who have been granted stewardship hallelujah i'm going to Elorin, i think in two or three weeks and i'm telling you those people are so excited in that city they've been listening to koinonia messages let me tell you something i met two women in all sincerity the women told me that they pray and fast every week what's their prayer that god should speak to me to come and open koinonia in abuja that's their prayer they have taken it as a burden upon themselves because they believe that god is doing something they want to receive 
I've seen the God of wonders work miracles for me. Those with gifts and talents spoke prophetically. The mantles of Elijah, Paul and Timothy. I want to see that power at work inside of me. I'm tired of the status quo. There's gotta be more than this. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. Help me say, there's gotta be more than this. For desperate people do desperate things and we press in deep. It's gotta be more, gotta be more, it's gotta be more than this. Sam was here. Yeah. When Panam was doing how many years in ministry? Panam was doing 40 years in ministry. After Koinonia, Sam left this and went to Abuja to go and celebrate with him. Many people look at Panam and they feel, ah, this. See, when you see a man with results, even if it is joke, something made it happen. Are you getting what I'm saying? If it was just like that, it would have happened everywhere. Something made it happen. Something made it happen something made it happen there are some of you who are sick in your body you are carrying all kinds of sicknesses you've seen the miraculous thing god is doing in this place but you are not yet interested there are many of you who are supposed to be walking in acute levels of the anointing see with the kind of atmosphere you've been seeing they are the presence of god that is supposed to find expression in your life should even scare people but many of you you come in and you move around i see people who come from other states and once the service is over they are looking for every and anything it's gotta be more gotta be more huh? hallelujah i remember in 2007 i was in port Harcourt. i've told you the story that was when the wealth anointing hit me i know it entered me God told me to give everything that I had home and abroad. I dragged it and when I went and dropped it, I went back outside. It was an overflow like this. I went outside. I sat down angry. Not angry, but ah, I knew I gave my Isaac. I knew this one was not Ishmael because there was nothing again. My faith was not hanging on anything. And when I sat down, the Lord spoke to me very clearly. He said, son, from today you have entered wealth. That was what the Lord told me. He didn't say you are rich. The Lord told me you have entered well. Hallelujah. I will never forget. Four days after, somebody calls me by 6.10 in the morning, shaking under the anointing and saying, is this Joshua Selman? I say, yes, who are you? Who gave me your number? He said, that's not the issue. Please send me your account number. I say, who are you? No, so that you will not be a 419 person. When an anointing is on your life, it is on your life. It has come. If it's not there, you can fake it. You can say, I know Koinonia. I know everything. If it is on your life, it will be evidence to everybody said the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elijah tonight we are going to pray greatness is what God wants to give us in this season and let me tell you if you will pray tonight from the depths of your heart you will receive something there are many of you your ministry will accelerate if that healing anointing comes upon your life there are many of you you have prophetic graces there are many of you you are you are totally confused there's free counseling here by the grace of God people criticize me and say I I am not accessible on Mondays I'm I'm sitting and meeting people from morning till night till night anybody no discrimination I don't delegate people I sit down and listen to people and by the wisdom of God we hear what God has to say there are people who are sitting do you know there are people who live around this neighborhood who have never come from Koinonia they will just bring chairs and sit down outside and enjoy it and say I know Koinonia more than you Whereas other people are coming from Kaduna. We are the desperate people. We want more, more, Lord. We are the desperate people. We want more, more, Lord. We are desperate people. We want more, more, Lord. We are desperate people. We want more, more. Lord. Hallelujah. Where's Morgan? I think he, he was he sent me a text about his genotype. There are people who still doubt. They think we are faking it here. Hallelujah. From the day Pastor Jakes, hallelujah, and his wife to be 
were healed, their genotypes changed from AS to AA. From that day, we have seen that miracle again and again. There are some of us trusting God, but you see that and say, is it really true? Again and again, you hear of all kinds of testimonies. God blessing people, HIV, whole families have been healed of HIV with medical proofs. I'm not an idiot, we are not liars here. We don't fake anything. If it doesn't happen, it did not happen. You were with me, Yerima. Where is Yerima? Not here. Were you in, in Mina? The crusade we had. It was Jodika. Where is he? These guys follow me for my meetings and they know the things that God did. The PFN people, by the second day of that crusade, look, they lined sick people. There were all kinds of crippled people, deaf and dumb. I've, I've never seen heterogeneous miracles in quantity and quality. I, I knew an anointing came upon me, but there's somebody. You have been coming every week. You are so used to it. Now you are waiting for the meeting to finish. Whereas someone traveled and said, Lord, if you are real, I have left all the way and I've come. If it's to die here, kill me here. And the person will get up and live with an anointing. I met a woman in Abuja and the woman looked at me and she said, man of God, your messages that I've not listened to, they are not more than four. I have never seen you, but I've listened to the messages. There are some of you here. We, we, we mortgage the millions and millions of naira that would have made from tape and CD ministry so that nobody will have an excuse not to hear the word of God. I listen to every koinonia message, every. I don't sit down and say, it's Joshua Selman. I listen. When there is a prophecy, I get down on my knees and I open up my heart. I don't want to be the kind of man of God that is blessing others and dying. It must work in my own life. Hallelujah. There are many of you, you are seeing tomorrow Annie is going to get married. How many of you remember when I prophesied at the beginning of the year that the Lord told me there will be supernatural marriages even for people who did not expect? I'm sure many of you had it and said it's just one of those things. The trouble is that many of us always think that these things are just joke or a way of carrying out a program. I wish you knew the spiritual preparations that go through for one koinonia service. One koinonia service. Tonight we are going to pray. We are going to contend for this anointing for greatness because it's available. Anything, listen, anything that is not working in your life, you have not known how to receive it because it is available here and now. Rise up on your feet. Hallelujah. I hope you're mightily blessed by this video you just watched. And if you have not given your life to Christ, this is the avenue for you to do so. Do it like, share, and comment on all our videos. Don't forget to hit the subscription button to get updates from this channel. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of Christ. Stay connected.